I'm Tara Bradner, and this is Hopeful Hints, an infertility podcast where you will receive quick, hopeful hints to guide you through infertility. Here, you will find education, inspiration, and most importantly, find peace as you walk through this journey to fulfill your family vision. Welcome to Hopeful Hints. I'm your host, Tara Bradner, and today we are going to be talking about unexplained infertility. So for those that may not be familiar with unexplained infertility, this is a diagnosis when you've been trying to conceive without results and both the male and female have had a full infertility workup and there's been no abnormal findings. So basically, everything appears normal to the medical provider, yet the results are indicating otherwise, aka you're not pregnant. Welcome to one of the most frustrating diagnoses Welcome to one of the most frustrating diagnoses ever. I had this diagnosis myself before it was found that I actually had endometriosis. So I understand just how frustrating and confusing this is. And as a medical provider, I also find it frustrating that we cannot give you an answer to why the outcome is not happening. It's heartbreaking, confusing, frustrating. Insert your word to receive this diagnosis. So today I've broken down three different perspectives of this disease from the eyes of ASRM, so the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, ACOG, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and AAFP, the American Academy of Family Physicians. We are going to look at what they say about the disease, what the workup looks like, and treatment recommendations. In today's show notes, I've included a free download for you. I have created my top 10 questions you should be asking your reproductive doctor. You can print or download this, add your own questions, and take it with you to your appointment so you do not forget key questions that help provide clarity for you as you move forward with your infertility journey. So let's get started. We are going to start with AAFP, the American Academy of Family Physicians. So the definition of unexplained infertility is couples who have no identified cause of infertility. Basic, right? The diagnosis should be made with an initial history that should cover your menstrual history, timing and frequency of intercourse, previous use of contraception, previous pregnancies and outcomes, any past history or ruling out of pelvic infections, any medication use past or present, occupational exposures, substance abuse, alcohol intake, tobacco use, and then any previous surgeries on the reproductive organs or in the area. So that is what they look at when making this diagnosis. When it comes to treatment, couples who have no identified cause of infertility should be counseled on the timing of intercourse for the most fertile period. So they even explain that six days preceding ovulation, you should begin trying to conceive. They recommend using ovulation kits to find your LH surges. And then they also go into detail about the accuracy of utilizing midday or evening urine when you're utilizing ovulation kits. I recommend following each kit because each kit's going to specify the best timing for when you should be utilizing them. My current favorite is Miria because it also has progesterone sticks with it. I've linked in today's show notes a discount code for you guys if you want to check out the Miria kit. I personally love it in addition to my patients are finding it to be their favorite as well. So an interesting statement that was also per was couples with unexplained infertility may want to consider another year of intercourse before moving to more costly and invasive therapies such as reproductive technologies. They also note that IUIs and ovulation induction do not result in increased pregnancy rates in women with unexplained infertility. In addition, they go on to say they recommend couples should be counseled on lifestyle. They do indicate there's no firm evidence that preconception counseling leads to increased life birth rates, but this is because there's been no studies done on the topic. So, How vague is lifestyle, right? Like this is one of the things a coach and a nurse practitioner 
that I've become passionate about is when we tell people to make lifestyle changes or go lose weight or you have PCOS, you know, go lose weight. That, what does that mean? And there's no plan put in place. So that is what has made me passionate as a coach to really implement individualized plans based on your diagnosis, based on what works for you. What works for you or what may help you find consistency in staying with the program or achieving optimal results is probably not going to be the same that works for me. So um, I also know that when we hear try another year, sometimes that's just not going to be okay. Sometimes when we hear try another year, that's a trigger for us. So I want to just put a disclaimer in here that use your intuition, use your gut, have a conversation with your healthcare provider, bring in a coach to help navigate this for you and do what feels best for you. Let's move into ACOG, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. So this is like your OBGYN groups, okay? So the definition is once again, when all testing has been ruled out for infertility and all tests are normal. They note that at minimum, these patients should have evidence of ovulation actually occurring, that your tubal patency is present, so an HSG has been performed and nothing abnormal was found on that, and a normal semen analysis. And it's more of a diagnosis of elimination, so eliminating causes and that's how you get to this unexplained infertility diagnosis. I wanna point out here too, I am very, very passionate about ensuring that a semen analysis is performed on day one of a female uh, diagnosis or evaluation for infertility, not waiting or trying treatments and then having that done. Male is 50% of the factor, right? So we need to make sure that they are evaluated as soon as you are as a female. All right, to diagnose, they refer to ASRM guidelines. So the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, they refer to their guidelines for a standard infertility evaluation to be completed, which includes a semen analysis. Once again, looking, are you ovulating? Ruling out with an HSG. And then looking for tests such as ovarian reserve. So those testing and they mention laparoscopy. We're going to get to that in a second. So when the results are normal and there's been nothing found, that's how we get to unexplained. They do note that unexplained infertility accounts for 15 to 30% of couples who will be diagnosed with infertility. And then for treatment, they note and list the word empiric. So this means educated guess, basically, because it does not address a specific issue. So the main treatment for unexplained includes observation with timed intercourse, lifestyle changes are mentioned here again. They do bring in Clomid and IUI. However, most are shifting to Femera and IUI or Femera timed. It just depends on your situation, but Femera is becoming the more recommended treatment. And then controlled ovarian hyperstimulation with IUI and IVF. So where you're being checked with lab work and ultrasound when you're using these medications. They do also note that your any menstrual abnormalities should be further investigated for underlying causes. So that's meaning if you have right off the bat, if you come in and you have any irregularities with your menstrual cycle, we need to branch off and dig deeper and look for PCOS, check your thyroid, check prolactin levels. And then they even go in to talk about checking your basal body temperature recordings using ovulation kits, and then progesterone level testing to see if ovulation has occurred. In addition, other points that ACOG points out is that the principal treatment for unexplained infertility includes observation with timed intercourse and lifestyle changes before moving into oral medications, IUIs, and IVF. They do note that the most expensive but the most successful treatment for unexplained infertility consists of bringing in reproductive technologies, including IVF, with or without ICSI. And they discuss that IVF is a treatment of choice for unexplained infertility when the less costly treatments, so IUIs, etc., have been tried and failed. And the optimal treatment strategy needs to be based on you as an individual patient, 
your age, your treatment response, side effect profile, which includes, are you at risk for multiple pregnancies? If you do become pregnant with multiples, how safe is that? And then cost considerations. Okay, moving into ASRM. So their definition is the same as the previous two. So we're gonna move into their recommendations for treatments for couples with unexplained. So they start with a natural cycle with IUI. So just simply do an IUI with no medications. They then move into Clomid, but once again, I know from research they're shifting more to Femera as the, the key choice for medications. And then moving into gonadotropins with intercourse or IUI. So gonadotropins are like your gonal S, your folistim, those type of medications. And then they talk about combination of a Clomid or Letrozole and a low dose gonadotropin. So that's when you're on an oral and an injectable medication with an IUI. They do talk about doing a low dose gonadotropin, so folistim or gonal F. Um, with an IUI alone, and then timed IUIs, and then moving into IVF. They conclude that treatment of unexplained infertility is empiric as well. So they are doing educated guesses based on your response, your lifestyle, you as an individual. They note that most couples, the best initial therapy is a course of three or four cycles of ovarian stimulation with oral medications and IUIs, followed by IVF for those that are unsuccessful with IUIs. So I wanna pause right there. Did you notice that they said three or four cycles? So I have seen many of you doing uh, six, 10. I heard of somebody recently doing 17 IUI cycles. You guys, this is not recommended therapy to do that many. And this is where I think we need to take a pause wherever you're doing you know, oral medicated or IUIs and at three or four not working, seek a second opinion. And you may stay where you're at initially. I'm, I have a whole episode dedicated to second opinions that I will link in today's show notes. But I think at times it's important just to take a pause, a timeout, a break, regroup as a couple, um, and maybe bring in a coach at this point to help you navigate. This is where it gets very emotional and confusing for some, maybe not all of you. You might be fine cruising through and doing more than that. But just to really know that there's statistics out there, and once again, I'm gonna link in today's show notes. I have done a whole blog and podcast on this on what success rates are beyond three or four rounds of IUI specifically. So I think really being aware of that financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, that we need to know what recommendation is and success rates are. But once again, it comes back to only you as an individual and a couple can make the decision for what's best for you moving forward at this stage. I wanna include some additional key points I pulled from these three organizations. So according to ASRM guidelines, a laparoscopy should be performed in women with unexplained infertility if you have signs of endometriosis. So to receive the diagnosis, if you have signs of endometriosis, a laparoscopy is recommended. Or if you have a finding where a reversible tubal disease is suspected, then perform a laparoscopy. Otherwise, it is not recommended. Also, normal semen analysis results do not guarantee an outcome of a baby. So a significant portion of patients with normal semen on a routine analysis, and there was no other findings with the female or male, had no positive outcome of conception after several months of trying to conceive. It is also recommended that if a semen analysis is abnormal, it should be repeated one month after to ensure accurate testing. So one month it's abnormal, we need to recheck the next month, a month later, again, to ensure accuracy. And then women with irregular cycles should not have progesterone drawn on day 21. If you have a 28 day cycle, that's fine. But if you have any fluctuation or irregular cycles, so we have to have you tracking cycles prior to knowing this. But what you could do is bring in those ovulation kits, okay? And then if you see a peak, so an LH surge is detected seven to eight days after, then we check your progesterone levels. 
and we're looking for levels higher than three. That indicates ovulation has occurred. So once again, I want to reiterate, make sure that you feel your doctors answered all of your questions, that you have clarity after each appointment or moving into each treatment. Why was a certain treatment selected? Why was one not selected for you? Just to reassure that you have every right to ask these questions. There's no such thing as a silly question. The diagnosis of unexplained infertility can be confusing and frustrating. So this also might be a great time to bring in a coach such as myself that has some medical knowledge and my background. I can help you implement lifestyle changes. I can help you understand aspects of your treatment so that you can move forward with confidence and empowered and have full control of your treatment of unexplained infertility. Thank you for listening to Hopeful Hints. Make sure you hit subscribe so you do not miss an episode every Tuesday and check out today's show notes for so many freebies. I do post one every month, so find one, download them all. Don't miss out on that. See you next week.